Hey everybody, welcome to the Home Defense Show. This is your host, Skip Coriel. Boy, today I want to talk about the uh, the Kyle Rittenhouse uh, trial that's going on right now. Uh, I'm doing uh, audio only today simply because I just don't feel like being in front of a camera right now. Uh, it's not that I'm insanely ugly or anything like that. It's just I, I just don't want you to see my lovely orange shirt that I'm wearing right now. I think I'll do this in two segments. First segment, we're going to go over what exactly did Kyle Rittenhouse do? Well, you know, what happened, right? And then in the second segment, I'm going to tell you what I think about what happened. Just my opinion. Okay, but let's start out with an article. Uh, This is from ABC Eyewitness News Channel 7. Kyle Rittenhouse takes a stand. Key takeaways from day seven of the trial. Why did Rittenhouse go to Kenosha, and what did he say about his encounter with Joseph Rittenbaum? That's one of the guys he killed. Joseph Rosenbaum. Sorry. Kenosha, Wisconsin. Kyle Rittenhouse took the stand in his murder trial Wednesday, testifying about how he shot three men during a protest against police brutality in Kenosha, Wisconsin last year. Rittenhouse killed Joseph Rosenbaum and Anthony Huber and wounded Gage Grosskreutz. He faces multiple charges, including intentional homicide. Rittenhouse, who was 17 at the time of the shootings, has argued that the men attacked him and he fired in self-defense. Here's a look at some of the highlights from his testimony. And now we we get into, uh, oh, you know, like the, the backstory, right? You know what? I'm going to tell you what I think now. You know, when I listen to the news, the news reports, uh, even a year ago, right, you, you got the impression that Kyle Rittenhouse lived in Chicago and he drove all the way to Wisconsin to kill people. And uh, I don't think that's exactly right. It says Rittenhouse said he lived in Antioch, Illinois. Folks, look it up on the map. It just across the state line from Kenosha. In August 2020. And, and here's, here's, here's what he said about himself. He described himself this way. He enjoyed swimming, going to the beach with his friends, and just normal teenage stuff. He was a police explorer for the Grays Lake Police Department and a cadet with the Antioch Fire Department. That's not exactly, you know, the dreg of society. It sounds pretty patriotic and responsible to me. He also was a certified lifeguard trained in CPR, defibrillator use, and basic life support. He sounds a lot like my son, my 15-year-old son. He's got this protector-defender lifestyle, you know, truth, justice, the American way. That's how I'm reading it. He said his father, grandmother, aunt, uncle, and a cousin live in Kenosha. So he wasn't really an outsider. He lived right across the state line, probably with his mother, I assume. But he was frequently went to Kenosha. Why did he go to Kenosha? The protest began on August 23rd, 2020, hours after a white Kenosha police officer shot Jacob Blake, a black man, during a domestic disturbance. Rittenhouse said he saw a video on social media of the unrest. Two days later, Rittenhouse went to downtown Kenosha and volunteered to clean graffiti off a high school. That seems like a, a pretty... <laughs> stand-up thing. He, he went there to help. Doesn't sound like he went there to kill people. He met the owners of a car dealership where vehicles had been burned, offered his condolences, and said he wanted to help. He said the owners asked his friend to protect their business and that he joined his friend and others that night. He went there to help protect this car dealership, right? And boy, if you remember all those BLM protests, Man, they were burning everything down. They were destroying buildings. And that sounds reasonable to me. He took his semi-automatic rifle and first aid supplies. He gave his bulletproof vest, which he said was issued by the Grays Grays Lake Police Department, to a friend. He said he felt he wouldn't need it because I'm going to be helping people. You know, at this point, I believe the kid. Uh, I I believe that he was uh, fairly altruistic. Um, maybe naive a little bit. You know, people argue, this guy had really bad judgment. Do you remember when you were 17 years old? 
Is that when you had the best judgment of your life? You know, all the time I'm meeting concealed carry students that come to class and they'll say, you know, before I take the class and, you know, spend all this time and money on it, I want to make sure I'm not going to be turned down. And I say, okay, well, what, what's the problem? Well, when I was a kid, I did X, 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 which means I, I did some, something stupid, okay? Man, I remember when I was 17 years old. It's like, do you remember all the, the altruistic ideas, the idealism that you had? You know, it, it's like everything seemed black and white, and you were very, very passionate about things that you believed in. And, you know, my 15-year-old my son reminded me of, of how I used to feel. You know, just the other day, you know, it's like we'll talk about, you know, this happened in the news, and, and he'll say, how is that possible? That is wrong. They should not be doing that. <laughs> and uh, he's very passionate, especially about the idea of right and wrong. And so Kyle Rittenhouse sees his second home, hometown, being trashed uh, by Black Lives Matter people in riots, unlawful riots. And I imagine he's thinking, that's wrong. This should not be happening. I need to go there and help. Now, having said that, if my son Cedar came to me and said, uh, you know, Dad, they're rioting downtown and uh, I need to go down there and help, um, I, I would say something like this. Son, I applaud your idealism and your intentions. You've got a good heart and I like that you want to help. But there's no way in hell you're going downtown with a rifle to help protect a car dealership. Let them hire professional security for that. There's just no way I would let my son do that, whether he's 15, 16, 17. I'd just say, sorry, you're staying home with me. You're not going anywhere near that place. Why? Well, let's read on and find out why. Rittenhouse testified that Rosenbaum threatened his life twice. He said he had been putting out fires and asking people if they needed medical help when he saw Rosenbaum carrying a steel chain and wearing a mask. Rosenbaum began screaming at him. He said, he was just mad about something. He's screaming, if I catch any of you effing alone, I'm going to effing kill you. Okay, that's called assault. Okay, that's the verbal crime of assault. You're threatening to kill people. When he encountered Rosenbaum again later, Rosenbaum shouted, I'm going to cut your effing hearts out and kill you, Rittenhouse said. Wow, and I believe there were witnesses uh, to that fact. Someone tells me twice in one night that they're going to effing kill me and cut my heart out. I'm taking the man at his word, okay? Unless I have good reason not to. Later, he was walking with a fire extinguisher after hearing protesters were burning cars at one of the lots his friends were trying to protect. Rittenhouse said he saw a fire in a truck on one of the lots. Then Joshua Zeminski approached him with a gun. Okay, I've got red flags at this point. Someone walks up to me with a gun during a riot. Uh, I'm on high alert. Okay, he's probably already on high alert. But then I suppose... Uh, Zeminski could say the same thing. <laughs> Rosenbaum came out from behind some cars and ambushed him, Rittenhouse testified. He said he tried to run away, but Rosenbaum chased him as Zeminski yelled, get him and kill him. Rittenhouse said Rosenbaum threw a bag at him that he mistook for the chain and that he pointed his rifle at Rosenbaum, but Rosenbaum didn't stop. He heard a gunshot behind him and I remember his hand on the barrel of my gun. Rittenhouse said. He said he fired four times, went up to Rosenbaum to see if he could help him, then ran away because people were yelling, get his ass, get him, get him. He also said later that he feared that if he let Rosenbaum take his gun, he would have used it and killed me with it and probably killed more people. Now here's what you got to figure into all of this. This was bedlam, right? Total confusion, chaos, and violence. The jury is going to decide whether or not it was reasonable for Kyle Rittenhouse to do what he did. Was he in reasonable fear of death or serious bodily injury? Imminent threat. Man, 
guys, this is like law 101 here, you know, deadly force 101. If you're in a situation like that, if you're not in fear of death or serious bodily injury, there's something wrong with your brain. You're short circuited someplace. A guy, you know, he's already threatened to kill him, chased him down the street, two men chasing down the street, yelling, get him, kill his ass, and then grabbed for his gun. In that situation, I would have done the same thing. But you know what? I wouldn't have been there. That, that's the kicker. And that's where people are falling down on all this. They're saying, well, he shouldn't have been there in the first place. Well, you know what? You don't send people to prison for the rest of their lives because they did they went someplace they shouldn't have been. You can also argue, you know, Rosenbaum shouldn't have been where he was at, right? And wasn't he, he's also a convicted felon. I believe Rosenbaum was a, a convicted uh, child molester. So these are not pristine people that Rittenhouse shot. Do you shoot them based on it? Of course not. But that's not what anyone's arguing. They're arguing that Man, you chase a guy down the road threatening to kill him and then try and take his gun. What do you think's going to happen to you? I mean, this is common sense. All right, Rittenhouse said Huber hit him in the neck with a skateboard and someone hit him in the back of the head with a rock, causing him to st stumble. Guys, that's serious bodily injury. That could cause death. I wouldn't want to get hit in the neck with a skateboard. A man tried to kick him in the face after he went down, he said. He fired twice at that man. So he has multiple assailants. They're trying to inflict death or serious bodily injury on him, you know, with, uh, with their feet and with skateboards, a deadly weapon. And so he fired. He fired twice at that man, but missed. Rittenhouse said he feared the man would have stomped my face in. Huber hit him in the neck again with a skateboard. So it's like, what kind of a person doesn't back down from an AR-15 after the guy's already pointed the gun and shot twice. You got to ask that question. I can feel the strap coming off my body, he said. I fire one shot. So the guy's got his AR-15. He's pulling it towards him. He feels the sling coming off him. So it's like, okay, now or never, right? In the next instant, Grosskreutz ran up to him. He lowered his rifle as Grosskreutz raised his hand in a surrender motion. Okay. But Grosskreutz was holding a pistol, and as Rittenhouse lowered his weapon, Grosskreutz pointed the pistol directly at my head. So Rittenhouse fired once, hitting Grosskreutz in the arm. So when Grosskreutz wasn't pointing the gun at him, when he lowered the gun, Rittenhouse lowered his gun, didn't shoot him. But then Grosskreutz pointed the gun at him again, and that's when Rittenhouse shot. Rittenhouse testified that after he shot Grosskreutz, he approached a line of police vehicles with his hands up. People were screaming, and I'm just trying to get to the police, he said. I didn't do anything wrong. I defended myself. He walked up to a squad car and told an officer he had just shot somebody. The officer said, get the expletive back or you're going to be pepper sprayed and go home, go home, go home, he said. He turned himself in at the Antioch Police Department about an hour later because the Kenosha station was barricaded. He said officers made him sit on a chair and wait for Kenosha detectives to arrive. I was vomiting and having panic attacks and my head was spinning, he said. I couldn't think clearly. Now, when you put all of this together, the totality of the circumstances, you can argue, listen, this guy exercised poor judgment or he wouldn't have been there. And you know what? I totally agree. He exercised poor judgment. You don't go into the bowels of mayhem and chaos and violence, you know, to protect someone else's property. You don't do that. I do it to protect someone else's life, but not to protect their business, unless I'm being hired to do that. But this kid, he's young, he's idealistic. Uh, maybe he was a cop wannabe. You know, he was like a, a cop cadet in his hometown. So I understand all that. So yeah, his judgment was flawed. But he's not on trial for having bad judgment. He's on trial for homicide, intentional homicide. Okay, and they want to put him away for the rest of his life. I don't think it's going to happen, folks. I really, really don't. Um, I believe he's going to be acquitted simply because that's what the facts say. The law says you don't go to prison for having bad judgment. 
you go to prison for breaking a law. And it looks to me like Kyle Rittenhouse, he met all the standards for use of deadly force. Now, should you go into a, uh, a riot and put yourself knowingly in harm's way because you want to help your fellow man? That's a judgment call. All right. I do it to save my kids, uh, to get my wife out, um, to save another friend. But I wouldn't go down into the bowels of all that death, mayhem, and violence and all the burning and rioting. I, I wouldn't do that just to save someone's car. You know, that's my opinion. You guys make your own opinion. But you know what? We had rioting in Grand Rapids last year. Is it possible that I could have gotten in a situation like that unknowingly? Yeah, because I don't expect to be caught in a, in a Black Lives Matter riot in Grand Rapids, because it's, it had never happened before. Had this ever happened before in Kenosha, Wisconsin? I don't think so. But he went there, he exercised poor judgment, and it got him in trouble. One of the things this highlights is, folks, man, if you're going to carry a gun, you need legal protection. Okay, and I'm not going to be a salesman here. I'm just telling you, you don't know what's 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 going to happen to you and what situation you're going to be in you probably don't have six figures to defend yourself in this kind of a politically charged thing i mean what did joe joseph biden called rittenhouse a white supremacist you know joe biden his brain is on on crack or something because if kyle rittenhouse is a white supremacist he's not very good at his job because all three people he shot were white so, Kyle, you need to figure out, uh, you know, if you're a white supremacist, you need to reconsider what you're doing here. But I don't think that he is. And Joe Biden's an idiot. All right. Well, you know what? I could talk this into the ground, but I've already gone uh, quite a while here. So you guys decide what you think is real. That's what I think is real. Um, I think he's going to be acquitted. And uh, rightly so. He should be acquitted. I don't think he'll ever. Uh, do anything like that again. And the poor kid has suffered enough. Did the bad guys suffer more? Yeah. But like I said, look up the names. Uh, do a search on that and find out what kind of people these were. These were not choir boys that got shot. These were BLM activists um, that were there to cause, well, physical cruelty on other people uh, and, and to destroy things. To hurt people and break things. That's why they were there. And they kind of got what they deserved. And uh, Kyle Rittenhouse, Kyle, you shouldn't have been there. Next time, I hope you make better judgment. All right. Well, hey, we are out of time here. We're going to go ahead and uh, uh, talk about our sponsors here. Uh, Center Shot Indoor Gun Range, centershotgunrange.com, where it's always a perfect 70 degrees. I was just there last night teaching a tactical accuracy and precision class. Check out Center Shot. They're always there for you. Uh, the weather's great. Uh, you can wear your Hawaiian shirt uh, if you want all winter long. It's fantastic. So check them out. Legal protection. USCCA, United States Concealed Carry Association. Uh, you know, get with my man Gavin there and, uh, you know, get set up with that because you never know when you're going to blunder into a riot or some kind of a deadly force situation. So check it all out. If you want more training, concealed carry training, advanced training, Midwest tactical training, go to MWTAC.com, Michael Whiskey Tango Alpha Charlie.com and check that out. Folks, I don't like talking about stuff like this, but I felt that I had to say something because uh, it's just not making a lot of sense to me. Okay, it's like the whole Trayvon Martin thing, right? You can't you just can't believe the media. Don't believe the media, and the truth doesn't come out till like a year later. It's a year later, over a year later, the truth is coming out. Do diligence. Do your research and find out exactly what happened before you start making rash statements about Kyle Rittenhouse. All right, I don't defend his poor judgment, but I do defend his right to keep and bear arms and uh, his use of deadly force. All right, this is Skip Coriolan, Home Defense Show. Go on out, protect your family, protect, defend, but use good judgment. We will see you next week. Have a great day and uh, go out and shoot Bambi.